Hi, listeners. Chatty Chappies. Here we are again. Chatty Chappies. Chatty Chappies. Chatty Chappies. Chatty Chappies. Brian and Andrew. Oh. Chatty Chappies. Chatty Chappies. Thank you for turning on Chatty Chappies. Hi. Well, here we go again. Yes. Yeah. There was magic talking last time about our day out in Dingwall. It was our and, day out in Dingwall. And yeah. it was actually, you know, not only did we have good soup and... Oh yes, that. and it was an exceptionally nice day. It was a lovely day at Cromarty Car Park. Cromarty Car Park, and we talked about. I meant to mention that in the last program. We talked about the Cromarty Car Park before because that was where the community got together. The Vikings mm-hmm. got together to pass on information and news. So it was like the hub of the place. So that was the seat of government. The seat of government, exactly. Which is Dingwall. Yep. In the Isle of Man, they call it Tingwall. Tingwall. But it's the same word, yep. and it means, uh, I'm not trying to try and give you the exact translation of it, but it means uh-huh. like a meeting place. Uh, That's right. Sitting down and yep. like so we are shooting the breeze. In that Making car park, the there's, there's the round stones. Yes. That would have been where they would all sat around. Yes. Yeah. That, for that, their powwow. With a power, yeah, or whatever that yeah. was. So here we are, part two of our visit to the classic car show it's at Dingwall. At Dingwall, and of course, Cromarty Car Park. It's spelt differently to the village of that name. It ends in IE, as does apparently the title. Yes, uh huh. The Earl of Cromarty is. Yeah. The title ends in IE rather than Y. And old maps have IE. Mm, yep. Yep. You know? So, yeah, that's... Mm. So that's it. So, so anyway, yeah. back so, to cars. We, yeah. And we talked about different things. We talked about... Uh, wheel sizes. Wheel sizes, yeah. Now, thinking since we talked about that, I was saying that if you were going down to your Ford dealership or your Triumph dealership to get your Ford Escort or your... Triumph yep. Toledo in 1982 or whatever. Yep. No, you didn't go, James, these cars have got awfully small wheels on them. They just look normal. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, we increased the, the diameter of yep. our wheel hubs, our, our wheel rooms. Yep. Because most cars now either have 15 or 16 inch. Yes. Yeah. And... We were just mm-hmm. sort of thinking back. If you went out in a Ford Escort or a Triumph Toledo uh, today, yep. for the first time, would the ride quality feel different because of the smaller wheels? Now, that, that's interesting because we recently got a couple of electric bikes. Yeah, and the wheels are twenty inch, okay. and we're used to cycling at 27, 28 yeah. inch wheel, and I think the ride is not quite as good, and there's a tendency for the wheels to to bounce when it's on stones. Yes, uh, uh, more, it's exaggerated. Yes, rather than a bigger tire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe similar to uh, with the, uh, the smaller car and the, the, the smaller the, the, wheel, the wheel. because these. Ford Escorts and Triumph Toledos and similar size cars were your medium size car yeah. of the day. You know, it, it, family you know, saloon type. Ford yeah. Escorts and such like. You, you, you weren't quite in the Ford Catina, Ford Granada, mm-hmm. um, Triumph 250, you know. 2500s and yep. such like mm-hmm. which were the slightly bigger cars but you were you were room enough for a family of four yeah or if you had the estate version yeah. you could with there not being the same seatbelt laws you well. could get about 10 people in the back <laughs> yes um and we we saw some really nice machines didn't oh we? we did and some very like well preserved and Yes. Restored engines. Yes. You know, you yes. looked at engines. And of course, nowadays, you lift the bonnet of your car and you look, and there's a plastic cover. Yeah. You can't see anything. 
just you know you can see where to put the oil and the yeah. brake fluid and the coolant and mm -hmm. that's it and here's a good example of it well, can you remember which I think one this, this is, is a Triumph this is a Triumph uh, 1500 is it or right. Triumph Toledo yeah. engine but that and it's yeah remarkable it's remarkable and oh, of course a lot of these small cars still had front engine rear wheel drives so yes the, the engine yeah. pointed forward to the fore yeah. and aft yeah and uh, in fact you can see the where the the shaft the, the transmission yeah. tunnel would yep yeah between the passenger and driver's seat yeah go to the back right yeah. to between the back yeah. seat passengers as well yeah and uh, the very nice wooden dashboard yes mm -hmm. lots of lovely wood veneer now, did, wooden steering wheel did you prefer the rear wheel drive where you could sling the car around a bit or you know something not for the snow <laughs> since i got the jaguar yes i have gone back to like you obviously you drive a rear wheel drive car right. slightly differently yes you corner a rear wheel drive car slightly differently yeah. to the way you do a front wheel drive car yes you do and you get back into the way of it mm -hmm. um of course it's it's got an automatic gearbox so you i tend not to use the flappy paddle gearbox yeah but yeah, you begin, you, you you start to realize that it's, yeah. yeah. Some of the work's done for you with the automatic gearbox, yeah. but you've still got some well, work. In my own car, in the Jaguar, mm -hmm. gearbox, there's eight gears in the gearbox. All right. I kind of think that the car probably knows better than I do which gear it wants to be in. <laughs> so I just leave it to it, you know? Yeah. Some people call it laziness, but I just say, yeah. Nah. And the last program you were talking about being able to drive off in first gear. No, fifth with gear. Fifth gear with yeah. my diesel I engine and this and Bluebird. But could you do that with the Jaguar? No. 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 Um, <laughs> Would it do it in second? Yes. Yes, it does. Because but it's it, not nice it, for it. it. Well, you, 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 you can because that's how you drive in snow. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. so that when you, if you're leaving here, and for those who don't know where we are, uh, we've got a slight hill to get up. Yes. On a snowy day, you use the flappy paddle gearbox to put it into second. Into second, yeah. Will. But I've never tried doing it. No. If I had, if I had one of those very rare things, mm -hmm. a modern Jaguar with a manual gearbox, yep. I would sit and play with it yeah. and try it. But I've got a feeling that that Nissan Bluebird that I had, I th I've got a feeling that it was because it didn't have a turbocharger. Okay. Yeah. I think it was because it was a non-turbo. Yeah. Yeah. All its power came purely yeah. from the torque of oh. the diesel. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's, right. that's... So that's interesting. Yeah. So, so let's get back to the cars. And now we're yeah. in the photo here with Aye. this Fiat. lovely original Fiat 500. Lovely looking car. From the... It could be the 1950s, it could be the 1960s. Yeah. I think we do have... Oh, it's quite a late model. It's a J registration, which... 70... No, yeah. earlier than that, into the late 60s. Okay. Yeah, yeah G... Could be 1970. Was G 68? G was 68, 70. I do actually have a book about this. Do one, you? <laughs> what, one of these days, I will, will bore you senseless yeah. with the car registration system of yeah. the United Kingdom. But Fiat 500, nice Fiat car. Fiat 500, it's got a boot luggage rack to which is attached a wicker picnic hamper. Oh, nice so touch. Nice touch, yeah. 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 But I would like to actually see a Fiat 500 parked beside a Mini. And I've got a feeling the Fiat 500 is the smaller car. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's and another shot of it. 500. 500 cc engine. It's not a lot. No. You think nowadays, but you know, for driving around the streets of Milan. Yeah. Uh, you know, or any any European city. It was. 
more than adequate than on days before motorways. Yes. When you just had A roads and you could, you'll see foreign registered Fiat 500s still this morning, in fact. Uh -huh. I came, uh, uh, there was some car group at the Kings Mills Hotel, okay. French. Mm -hmm. I came, so uh, wonderful Renault 4 oh. uh, leaving heading off to get on the A9 yeah ah it's fantastic yeah. yeah is that the one that looked a bit like a bubble it, it's quite it rounded it was a wee bit of an estate car yes it was um, it was Renault's answer to the Citroen 2CB it was the, it was designed okay. for farmers and yeah. country people to go take their uh -huh. hens and yeah, bales of straw and such like to market and yeah. yeah. Now this is a very interesting car. Yeah. Dating back to the late nineteen fifties when the all the different sort of bubble cars, uh, to use a couple mm. old term, this is a Messerschmitt, the old German aircraft manufacturer. It's a three wheeler. Two wheels at the front, one wheel at the, b at the back, which is a much more stable setup than the Reliant Robin. One yeah. wheel at the front, two at the back. Nice colour. It's a lovely yellow shade. It's two seats, one behind the other. Yeah. It's basically an air it's an aircraft cockpit <laughs> on wheels. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, so you could drive along, you know, pretending that you were. Yeah. In the Luftwaffe. Yeah. No much protection there, is there? There is not very much <laughs> protection. I think one of the principles back then was that if everybody was driving a bit slower than they now yes. can do, it, the type of speeds that you can now do in a, any car yes. were not, you just weren't able to do in those days. There's a, a nice wee photograph sort of looking through the rear quarter light. Yeah. Very interesting. We can't call it a steering wheel. It's uh it looks like a somewhere something a cross between a boomerang and a coat hanger <laughs> which is used for steering. If you imagine the if you imagine uh uh Spitfire sp well, uh, the, the joystick of an aircraft <laughs> but with the Steering bit upside down. Yeah, that's what you've got. Oh dear, yeah, fantastic. Anyway, listen, yeah. well, the time's going. Oh, it? that's because we're rather. We're going to have to go to another it. program. Yeah, yeah. Um, so come, there we are. Come back for ne number three. Come back for number three, and you'll hear all the bits that you haven't heard yet. Yep, yep. Bye, Andrew. Bye, bye. You were listening to another program of Chatty Chappies. Mm -hmm.